up, YouTube? It's Baker. Welcome back to Blue Line Morphs, guys. Hope everybody's doing really, 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 really well. It is Tuesday night for me. This video's gonna be for Wednesday for you guys. First and foremost, uh, I apologize for not posting on Saturday. Uh, life's been a little hectic, guys. A lot of overtime, a lot of things running around. No excuse. I like to stay on my schedule, you know that. Uh, but Saturday, I actually intend on filming a video with my buddy Ryan. Ryan is an old school ball python breeder who was back in the industry when, you know, bananas were thousands and thousands of dollars, pies were unheard of in thousands of dollars, and so forth and so on. In fact, his favorite uh, morph is a, a lemon blast, and those were like kind of impossible to get, right? Uh, so we're going to start introducing him into the channel. By the way, he's also a cop. We're going to start introducing him into the channel a little bit. Uh, he started picking up some new snakes, so we're going to try to incorporate him and his breeding projects, where he comes from, and how he legit is a hero. So we'll talk about that in another video. I didn't film it on Saturday because he swung by real quick to check out my collection to see how far things kind of came in the ball python industry. Not that mine's top of the line, but it's not half bad. Uh, with that being said, guys, listen, as far as that raffle is concerned, we raised over $1,000, guys. Straight up, over $1,000. So I'm going to probably donate that later this week. What I'm thinking about doing is doing like a YouTube live on Sunday instead of Saturday night because I have a wedding to go to. Maybe Sunday night. I'll be chilling. I'll set the computer up in here. We'll do the giveaway, I think, probably on Sunday night. So it's going to be Instagram Live or YouTube Live. Uh, haven't decided yet. That's what we'll be doing the giveaway. We'll pick the, who wins the raffle, and we'll also donate the full amount, which, again, guys, over over $1,000. I'll contribute, contribute my own amount to that also. Uh, that's kind of part of the reason why I love this hobby, guys. Uh, listen, he's nothing to shake a stick at, right? Like, we'll pull him out real quick and show you guys. We're going to talk about why I still have rats in a second. We're going to pull him out right here. This is the boy you guys all bid on. I did a raffle for. He, yeah, listen, he, he's a cool little boy, all right? The pastel banana, black pastel cinnamon, spider, het pied. Um, but regardless, guys, let, let, let's talk about this realistically. You know, I always like to talk about things for what they are and be completely, completely, totally transparent. You know, top dollar for that guy is what, guys? Let's be honest. 300 bucks, 350 bucks. Still a lot of money for a snake. Still a lot of money for anybody. However, the fact that this community kind of joined in... Um, and raise up over $1,000 for a raffle for that boy because we know it's going to be donated to US Ark who takes care of us. Again, if you don't do so already, go donate. Go do what you got to do for a membership, so forth and so on. But we had people jumping in, donating 50 bucks. Now, now remember I said 50 spots, $10 a pop minimum. We had someone donating 100 bucks for a spot, one spot, 50 bucks for a spot, 40 bucks for this spot, 20 bucks. We killed it, guys. I love it. I might do it again, actually, with a female, a black pastel spider head pie female. I'm not entirely sure, though. We'll figure that out in a little bit. Anyway, guys, um, so kudos to our community. Kudos to everybody that was enjoying it. And the fact, guys, it sold out so quickly that I didn't have time to keep up. I was sending people my PayPal, and then it was, like, filled, and I had so many people that it was just, it was just overwhelming, guys. Like, we had people, probably another, I would say, 10 to 15 people that messaged me, like, hey, is raffle still open? And no. I mean, I can't just keep adding spots, you know? Um, but, hey, kudos to you guys. Kudos to this community. So today's video, guys, I just want to give a quick update on feeding, snakes slowing down, who I expect to go soon, so forth and so on. So first and foremost, we tried that Da Vinci stuff um, about two weeks ago now. I moved my, my two boys over into the tubs over here. Now, this boy right here, the Ozzy Pie Boy, did just shed out. He's looking good. And then the stranger boy right here is just chilling up there. Okay, guys? So I'm going to try to feed them probably in another six to seven days, give or take. And we'll see what happens with that. So I'm not saying the Vinci stuff doesn't work yet. I, I haven't given it much time. That being said, guys, every week I swing by my boy's house, Sal Gomez, and we pick up rats. And I always pick up about, I would say, 40 to 50 rats, give or take. Uh, depending on the week, depending on what he's got, depending so forth and so on. And for the most part, I always have like six to seven rats left over, maybe 10 rats left over at the most. He actually dropped rats off two Fridays ago. So about 10 days ago, I still have 10 rats left out of 40. Um, so when the first feeding, I only had like 10 snakes eat. And I was kind of nervous about it. But I had a lot of conversation with Big E from uh, Big, Big E's Reptile, Big Eric. And um, this is kind of what we, we were talking about. And I, I spoke to other people about this. I wanted to kind of share this thought process with you guys. So there's a twofold to this. First and foremost, um, I like to feed my snakes. They're going to get a decent sized meal once a week. And they get two, two meals up to about 750 grams per week, depending. Okay. Now, often when I buy some snakes, people don't have them on the same feeding schedule as me. So I have noticed when I pick up a snake, other than the stranger boy, um, they hammer food for me. For example, 
I see how messy these tubs are. I haven't opened them up. This girl right here, the cinnamon pie girl, hammering food. The OD vanilla clown girl, the OD fire entry clown, these two pies I picked up. All of them, when I first picked them up, were absolutely savages. I'm talking like two small rats a week, no problem. And they bulldozed their way back up to well over breeding weight. Uh, breeding weight. In fact, they got up and over above where they laid last year, okay? So, but now they've slowed down completely. So listen, some people could say that's at uh, building follicles, even though they haven't been paired, but I haven't, I have not ultrasound them either. But they could say it's because it's the time of the year, so forth and so on. But I've come to the conclusion, after the conversation with Big Eric, that a lot of these snakes are able to regulate, again, this isn't scientific, guys. This is kind of what I've been thinking, kind of give them a quick update what's going on around here and why I think my feeding has slowed down too much. It's like kind of a two-fold thing. So these snakes, I noticed, because they weren't on my feeding program, um, they're taking what's available to them, and they're kind of regulating themselves. In other words, they're eating and eating and eating until they get to the point where they're not going to keep eating until they just explode, but they're eating to the point where they get up to the size, especially my females, some of my females really here, where they know that they're able to maintain that weight, and they can grow follicles, and they can breed, and they can have the safe weight on in order to lay these eggs. I found it really interesting that every time I pick up a breeder female, um, they kind of balloon up to the size they want to be, and they kind of slow down for me and eat once every two weeks or maybe once a week if I'm lucky. But before then, they, they just put a massive size. For example, this girl, this pastel mystic girl. I bred her last year, okay? She was eating, guys, three rats a week, no problem. But she got up to well over the size. Last year, she laid about 2,800 grams. She's in about 3,200 grams now. She ballooned back up to that size. She's been locked, and she's at about 20 millimeter follicles. And she kind of slowed down on me. She refused back-to-back -back weeks. Now, I'm not concerned about it. I know she's not refusing because she's going to go because there's only 20 millimeters. But I'm convinced that she's kind of refusing the food because she knows I'm, I'm good. I'm up to size. I got the health. I got the health. I got the fat storage. I got all the storage I need. I'm good. Give me some sperm. Let's keep this thing going. The second reason, which is going to segue into the second part of this quick little video here, is a lot of my girls are building and they're at the size now with their follicles where they don't need any more food. Okay, we have one, two, I would say about seven or eight girls, nine girls right now that we're hammering food religiously have slowed down completely to almost refusing food because they're at that 30 millimeter per follicle now. They're like, you know what? I'm done eating. I'm good to go. But it's really affecting my rat intake and so forth and so on. Coupled with the fact that a lot of these girls, uh, like I said, bulldoze their way back up to sizes they kind of self-regulate with. And now they kind of slow down on food for me. So it's something that's really interesting. Um, what do you guys think? Comment down below. Have you guys noticed that? They, certain snakes kind of get up to the size. They know they're healthy. They know they're good. Especially your older females. Then they kind of slow down the food because, like, you know, I don't need any more of this shit. I'm good. Give me some sperm. Let me crank some eggs out for you. You know, bing, bang, bing, bong, right? Um, oh, yeah. Anyway, guys, let's go into the second part of this video. Kind of keep you updated on my breeding plans in 2022. I have slowed down. The last two or three weeks, I haven't been locking animals all that much. Kind of gave my males all a break. Uh, just because they haven't been eating all that much in one meal a month. But I kind of just want to let them slow down, relax a little bit. We're going to get back into cranking out some of these locks now. But I have some few girls, guys, that I think are going to lay for me relatively soon. I'm really excited about this. I want to share that with you. First of all, we have this girl here, guys. She had 30 millimeter follicles about three weeks ago. Looking real plump. Uh, I would say she's definitely in gravid. She's looking pretty good. Real thick and lumpy on me. And she was, of course, the normal pie that was paired to this clown boy. Right? Been over this pastel butter leopard red stripe clown. Uh, possible spot nose. Don't think so. Possible head pies. We're going to prove that out. Really excited about that. Of course, she's all food. And that kind of sucks. But she's definitely, I think, consider her a gravid. This girl right here is about 20 millimeter follicles. She slowed down greatly, guys, but I think she's going to go in the next couple months also. I think she's going to spit it out pretty soon. This girl, I think, even sooner than that. This girl right here, the big old het pie girl that I picked up from Ozzy Boyd, she's looking really, really thick too, guys. Um, I, I would say she, she's grabbing at this point also. She's at 26 millimeter follicles when I did ultrasound her. So I, I'm looking forward to catching an ovulation with her soon and probably going that prelay shed. Keep this thing moving. Again, this is all the reason why they're not eating for me. This girl right here is gravid. This is my Sterling Lesser Clown. She was paired a million times to the Aussie Pied Boy. Uh, she did just shed out. She killed a rat recently. She ate last week, two weeks, three weeks ago. Uh, she's about 25, 30 millimeter follicles about three weeks ago. So she's looking gravid for me. And I think she's going to go too. She was sitting cockeyed before. So that's another reason why all these girls are slowing down. We'll swing down over here. 
this girl right here, I kind of posted about her today. This is Luna. This is that first girl that gave me my first clutch that I smoked. And it's kind of like a redemption phase for me. She was paired to that Coral Glow Blast Out Trick Mojave male. Make some bells, make some cool combos with Russo in it. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but she's going to go for me too soon, guys. She was at about 25, 30 millimeter fog about three weeks ago too. She stopped eating on me and she's sitting a little cockeyed too. Um, doesn't really look as big or lumpy to me, but I, I, the follicles don't lie. Swing over here, guys. This girl is that mystery girl kind of proven out with the mystery clown. She just shed out for me. She's gravid. She's looking thick. She was at 27 or 28 millimeter follicles about three weeks ago. I don't think that's a prelay shed, to be honest with you. Um, however, I do think she's going to go soon. I could be wrong. Could have missed an ovulation. She did lay uh about a year ago to the day all right guys because her clutch popped out for me in about april 10th give or take uh, that's when they hatched out um so about a year ago i might have missed an ovulation but i think she's gonna go for me relatively soon especially with that shed we'll see what happens she's been refusing food when she was a dumpster and we'll swing over here guys Believe it or not, this girl only had the one pairing. This big old pastel pied girl. She's looking thick as can be. She was at 30 millimeter follicles. I'm looking forward to catching ovulation soon. Another reason, another dumpster and ate two small rats a week. I don't know what she did there. Um, that slowed down me completely. And that's why I have rats over there. So I'm definitely looking forward to catching ovulation on her and her turning gravid. Down here, we actually caught an, an ovulation with this. She is still an ovulation. Look at that, guys. There you go. Look. Ovulation. Ovulation, ovulation, ovulation. This is that champagne, pastel champagne pinstripe uh, that was bred to the Coral Glow Black Star Trick Mojave male. That is what an ovulation looks like, guys. Look at that. Like she's going to pop. All right, guys. Um, so I'm really excited about that. So I guess look forward to that shed coming soon. And we'll be pulling those eggs. So, guys, I'm sure I missed a couple of them. But that's why, that's what's going on over here at Blue Line Morphs, guys. Um, expecting... What was that, seven, seven or eight clutches in the next two months, give or take? Probably another 20 uh, the rest of the season. But, guys, uh, yeah, kind of interesting, though, with the whole rat and the breeding thing, stakes self-regulating and so forth and so on, and how breeding all these girls, my rat intake kind of slowed down. Comment down below if you guys notice that, too, when you pick up, like, a breeder female or any, any snake in general, they kind of blew up to the size they want to be at and self-regulate from there. But that's what's going on Blue Line Morphs, guys. Stay tuned on Instagram, blue underscore line underscore morphs. I'll keep you guys updated what I'm going to do in regards to that raffle. We're going to donate it, whether we're going to go live on Instagram or YouTube on Sunday. And we're kind of switching the days. I apologize. It is what it is. Yeah, so appreciate you guys watching. I hope your seasons are kicking ass and taking names, guys. Uh, be safe. Who's number watching six?